Today's video is dedicated to Casey McClara. Thank you, Casey. Kicking off Nuka Pena with Jetmir, Nexus of Revels, versus Atraxa, Breon, and Grolnok. Uh, we. Uh, yeah, it's not an incredible hand, but I like the Asper Sentinel, I dare say we'll draw into some cards with that, so we'll hope to get into some ramp. Pretty good draw on turn 1, Adeline Resplendent Cathar is an excellent means of us getting into some tokens, just need to get into another white source. A Spore Frog might be of some relevance to us, it does suggest that this is a frog based tribal deck. We draw ourselves into excellent, a Smothering Tithe, that is off the back of a Mana Vault, another white land would be nice. Atraxa, not going for anything. Ah, alright. Nakatl, War Pride. Uh, nothing for us to do on turn two, so we'll just... I don't know, threaten some removal or something. Not gonna bother swinging in with Esper Sentinel and making an enemy early on. Drew another card there off the back of a Farseek. And that was Leonin War Leader, so... Clearing cards off the top. Clearing three cards off the top so far. And still not into a land, so... It's done nothing... We'll get us closer to a land at the very least. Just a tap land from Brion. And uh, that is Emiria the Sky Ruin. That'll be a problem later on. Not a single plane's under their control at the moment though. And still nothing from Atraxa. So we're still in top deck mode with regards to this land. Wow, getting into all the big stuff. That is Marog this time. Uh, so uh, just fires of Yavamaya, I think. I really want to drop Scoot Swarm when we can at least get a land into play. Maybe even our sixth land. Make it difficult to remove. Anyhow, we're sticking at 7 cards, not having to discard here. Would be excellent to be able to get down the Smothering Tithe next turn though, that would stand us in really good stead. See the first commander of the game in Grolnok. Uh, milling 3 cards because the Spore Frog is swinging in. They mill some lands and a rapid hybridization. Okay, that is a Voice of the Blessed. Haven't managed to play with this one yet, but this is a really good spirit. Really good cleric as well, actually. That's a slightly relevant tribe. Also throwing out a Slayer Stronghold. Alright, a Basilisk Collar. If they want to tap down the Mana Vault into that, that's fine. Wow, a Jessica's Will. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're not doing too well on the land front here, are we? Kodama's Reach as well. They are forced to play into... Wow, still no land. Champion of Lamhall this time. Looks like we'll have to be forced to go for Jessica's Will, unless we can get into uh, something right here. <laughs> Jesus. Well, we've got everything we want, apart from mana. Alright, it's Jessica's Will then. Point that. Literally just doing this for an attempt at getting into lands, and that is Garrick Primal Hunter, Elemental Bond, getting rid of, unfortunately, two card draw sources, but we do get into a land, so... Yeah, going to have to discard a couple of cards, unfortunately. So let's get rid of the Morog. And we'll get rid of the Leonin War Leader as well, because apparently we're not going to get into another white source. The Commander coming in towards us. Spore Frog going into the right. Okay, and then pulling the Commander back and going in at Breon. Milling and uh, seeing the back of a bunch of lands again. Uh, we see a Sylvan Library being exiled by the Commander. There's Sakura Tribelder as well. And in the bin, Barlaged Recovery and a Swan Song playing Sakura Tribelder from Exile. I dare say they'll go for the Sylvan Library here as well. Uh, no, that is a search for Ascanta. They do pay the one into the Esper Sentinel, which I was hoping was going to be uh, a bit bigger by now. Thanks to the Jetmir. Goes really well with Esper Sentinel, buffing its power. Oh, an Inferno Titan. I bet our commander is going down to that, or our Esper Sentinel even. They did tap down the Mana Vault to do that. I was actually using this tactic in Ishin the other day. Basilisk Collar is Death Touch on the Inferno Titan, so going to be able to make great use of that. Sacrificing the Spore Frog. Um, yeah, they might as well prevent the combat damage. Sacrificing the Sakura Tribe Elder as well, and our Esper Sentinel is getting pinged. After that, throwing out a Colossus Hammer. Might see a board wipe from Atraxa here. No, they play out their Atraxa, so I'm guessing they don't have a board wipe in hand. Not one that they want to go for, anyway. So holding that back as a Death Toucher, I imagine. They're doing nothing with the Proliferate. Alright, now we get into a land. A little bit too late, but we'll take it. Definitely going for the Smothering Tithe, I think. We'll probably take quite a lot of damage, potentially, over the next turn or so. Especially with the Smothering Tithe in play, but we just have to try and catch up. 
as Kanta being flipped around into the sunken ruin. Continuing to swing in with the commander, the only good attack they've got is us, so milling three cards again. And uh, that was a broken bond in the bin. And then it is Suspicious Stowaway, uh, Birds of Paradise. Should probably see the back of a Traxxer next turn, so that's probably less damage for us. Um, yeah, they probably should be equipping up the Inferno Titan with Death Touch, and that'll turn that into a big threat. Anyway, Birds of Paradise from Exile, followed by the Suspicious Stowaway. And then finally, grabbing themselves that Silver Library, still six cards in hand. Okay, surprisingly, paying into the Mana Vault there. So they must be worried about, yeah, not having any mana for the next few turns. They uh, do not pay into the treasure token because of that. And then, strangely, tapping down the mana vault straight away. Uh, yeah, okay. So just saving themselves a ping there for some reason. Anyway, Basilisk Collar, they're about to gain a bunch of life, so needn't have worried about the ping. Alright, and using their Beast Within on the Inferno Titan, so that saves us using our Beast Within on it. And then as punishment, the Spirit swings in over there. That is a 2-2 two, two against 1 power. Now we've got some Smothering Tithe Treasures, so we can still hold up the Generous Gift. Um, don't think we're going to be using it on anything, though. Not worthy that this thing has flipped round now as well. Fixing the colours there with a Chromatic Lantern. Not worthy that a Khan's Bastion is in play for more Proliferate as well. And more removal, that is a Vraska the Unseen. Probably goes on Smothering Tithe. I just decided to plus that actually, so yeah, going to make the Vraska difficult to get rid of. And then a Traxxer swinging in towards us, so do we have to blow up a Traxxer as punishment for that? Might be a good use of our mana. Uh, we'll wait and see, we can always do it next turn. So see what we draw into here first of all, before we make any decisions. That is Jetmir's Garden getting into the mana slowly but surely. Probably go Champion of Lamhol into Adeline here, and we can swing in with Adeline and leave the Vraska alone, and then we'll, if no one's dealt with it, I mean, we're encouraging our opponents to swing in towards Vraska. We'll go for the Generous Gift if no one else points their removal over here, because it does have the Limit Break online next turn. So, Champion of Lamholt first, followed by Adeline. So, a plus counter on the Champion of Lamholt, and, uh, yeah, I think we are just going to swing in at the Simic player here. So that triggers the Adeline, which does trigger on any creature swinging in, but it is Adeline itself that is swinging in here. So triggers the Champion of Lamhol. So getting the three tokens here, our opponents can't block thanks to the Champion of Lamhol. And then make sure to drop the Triome, and now we're on six lands, ready for the Scoot Swarm if we want it. Just need to hope none of our opponents pay into the Smothering Tide now, because we are desperate for a token for the Generous Gift. Not very likely though, because we do get a bunch of draw triggers from the Sylvan Library. And there we go, they don't pay for that one. Seeing Azusa, Lost But Seeking now, which I assume goes well with the Commander. Yeah, you can play lands from there. So there's no um, caveat on how many you can do. Ramping very nicely from their Commander, they have no lands on the back of there now. And they're still at 7 cards in hand. The 1-1 one, one that can't be blocked, swinging in towards us. Not wanting to destroy it to the Vraska, apparently. So they do get to loot, thanks to that hitting us. That does trigger the Smothering Tithe again, because a loot does count as drawing. And they discarded themselves a life from the loam, so the next time they draw, they'll get to dredge that up. Oh, haven't seen this one played yet. That is Tamiyo Completed Sage. So another Planeswalker to worry about. Going for the minus X onto that, and creating a token copy of it. So that is the Spore Frog. And there we see the token, so hopefully no second harvest or anything. Jacob Hawken, Inspector. Now time to see if the Boros player is going to do anything about this Vraska. Well, no removal apparently. Heliod the Sun Crowned. Well, that is not animated. I don't think they've really got any means of life gain unless they want to equip this. That is what they're doing, so maybe throwing this away at the Vraska so that we can hold on to our generous gift. They won't want to throw their Atraxa in front of a Death Toucher, I wouldn't have thought. And then that could swallow up the Atraxa player's turn, getting the Vraska's loyalty back up. Maybe with the Khan's Bastion as well, would cost them a lot of mana. So doing the right thing, going in at the Planeswalker. Excellent, and damage going through to that, so that drops down to 4 loyalty away from that limit break. They do gain life here as well, so that will destroy the Beast token, thanks to Vraska's plus. And then it is Voice of the Blessed triggered there on the life gain, as did the Heliod. And that put the plus counter on the spirit. So I'm not going to bother with the generous gift now. 
thanks to our opponent slightly dealing with that. Just trying to keep my opponents distracted by each other as it stands now. Hey, <laughs> shall I? Voice of plenty. Um, yeah, giving all your stuff hexproof, that sounds pretty scary. If they drop another land, not sure if they've made a land yet, but if they drop another one, they can activate the Bastion. Now seeing another commander, Vraska Golgari Queen. Can't destroy our Smothering Tithe with that, thankfully. It may well go for the Champion of Lamhall, though, which would be really bad for us. Yeah, that's exactly what they go for. Worried about losing their Planeswalkers. So we're on a go-wide strategy, apparently. Vraska Unseen Plussing again. Yeah, my aim was there to probably go for the Generous Gift onto this, because I dare say they'll want to protect their own Tamiyo, even if it means them keeping their Planeswalkers. I'd sacrifice the Tamiyo for getting rid of the Vraskas, personally, but... Um... Anyway, yeah, this is going in down the middle. Might have to just leave the Tamiyo alone during this combat phase and try and start dealing with the Atraxa. So we'll leave the Shalai alone for now. It may well get wrapped up in a board wipe sometime soon. Oh, wow. All right, that is a Breath of Fury, which actually combos with the Nakatl War Pride. Ugh. Well... That's something to do after we've dealt with the Spore Frog then, I think. I was debating whether or not to throw this down, but that's something for over the next few turns then. We just go Deep Forest Hermit into our commander, I think. Everyone is near enough tapped out, shockingly. So we throw down our commander, first of all. That gives everything vigilance at the moment. And then we've still got the mana held up for Generous Gift. That is a Deep Forest Hermit, comes in with four creatures. All of these things have Haste, Trample, Vigilance, and I think, yep, yeah, we get the Double Strike now as well. And we're about to get a lot of creatures from the Adeline also. Uh, so we swing in, not sure if it matters, between humans and squirrels, so we'll go for these into Vraska. I have to leave the Tamiyo player alone because they'll crack that Spore Frog. I imagine they will to protect their Tamiyo. So we'll go wide and definitely hit the Planeswalkers. All right, so three squirrels swinging in down the middle. The Jetmere goes in at the right. The Deep Forest Hermit goes down the middle as well, and then we're trying to go wide on these walkers. Um, I should have swung in with the Adeline as well, actually. Yeah, completely forgot to click on that. Anyway, Adeline is triggering as well, which will make some more stuff, and hopefully that doesn't make them crack the Spore Frog. They should just chump block it, really because they should allow us to get rid of these planeswalkers. Oh, of course you are. Oh my god. Why? I mean, you're going to have to take some damage for the team, but, I mean, you're really only going to take, what is it, 8 damage if you take it. Maybe you just block with a Birds of Paradise instead and allow us to get rid of the planeswalkers. Uh, yeah, that's a stupid decision. Don't have any means of protecting our board here either, unfortunately. Well, they better hope that someone can deal with this Vraska because it is going to limit break next turn. So apparently I should have gone for the Generous Gift onto the Spore Frog during the Atraxa player's turn, but... Well, that's hindsight for you. Could have comboed off this turn with the Nakatl War Pride and the Breath of Fury. Got some stuff exiled there. That is a copy artifact. I think they've taken a land already. A copy artifact and Luta Il Core. Temple of the False God in play now as well, now exiling with the Tamiyo, a Sakura Tribe Elder. I'm assuming that they're going to get some kind of win off here, or maybe combo off if they wanted to protect themselves against that excess damage before. Otherwise, I just don't know why they didn't block with the Birds of Paradise and allow their opponents to take a bunch of damage. Maybe they've got Cyclonic Rift held up or something like that. Well, there's a Propaganda, that'll hurt us. Glad I held up the Generous Gift now. Copy Artifact coming into play now, not sure what they're going to go for with that. Maybe Basilisk Collar to try and get their commander through. Nope, going for Chromatic Lantern. Um, yeah, I don't see that they really need a Chromatic Lantern. I think the Basilisk Collar would have been a better decision for them. Anyway, not swinging in with their commander. And uh, they've got five cards and a bunch of mana held up, so hopefully there's no bounce. Soul Warden, that is going to add a hell of a lot of triggers to the stack, that is... Uh, thanks to Helio, potentially going to be game-breaking with the stuff we're doing. Following that up with the Brian Stout Arm, which animates the Heliod. They gain a life, so that triggers the Voice of the Blessed. And it also triggers the Heliod, which is pointed at the, um, at the Voice of the Blessed. So that is now flying with Vigilance. Uh, it needs 10 counters on it to gain Indestructible. And getting rid of the Tamiyo. 
So I'm going to encourage them to use some interaction from their hand. Totally ignoring the fact that Vraska could combo off next turn. <laughs> really? That's what makes you throw away your Birds of Paradise? I did say that they'd want to protect their Tamiyo at all costs. Inexorable Tide, whenever you cast a spell, proliferate. So I'm not going for the Karn's Bastion. I'm guessing they've got a 3-drop after this. And yet another Planeswalker, the fourth one, to come into play here. Jace Cunning Castaway. Triggers the inexorable tide, of course, and that will proliferate their two planeswalkers. Not worthy that they didn't put a time counter on our deep forest hermit, which is just rude. And then plussing on this, so going for the combat loot. And they do have a couple of flyers that can go straight over to us, so it's probably us that they swing in at. They do have to hit a player with Jace's ability as well, so it's probably us they hit as opposed to the Tamiyo. Alright, minusing down on the Vraska, excellent. If they can get rid of the propaganda, that would be great because it means that we can start barreling in towards the Simic player who's got way too much mana for my liking. They do get rid of that. Then they sacrifice a permanent or may sacrifice a permanent. Deciding against doing that, just going for the plus on there but not sacrificing and drawing a card. And then we get the Atraxa swinging in towards us. So I'll take that. They got rid of the propaganda for us. So we can test them for a Cyclonic Rift here. So triggering the Jace gets them to loot, which triggers the Smothering Tithe. Discarding themselves a Thrumming Bird, surprisingly. Alright, Secure the Waste isn't terrible. I'm expecting some kind of board wipe here, in all honesty. So let's try and get rid of... Uh, I want to get rid of both the Vraskas, in all honesty. So we'll try and go wide on these Vraskas again, but I want to really barrel in towards the Simic player as well. Unfortunately, lost our champion of Lamholt, of course, otherwise our opponents would be in a world of hurt here. Not going for the combo because, like I said, I'm expecting um, a mass bounce effect here and I'd rather my opponents don't know about it. So two of the, or two pairs of the human tokens swinging in at each respective Braska. And then, oh, that's not good. Yeah, scooping at instant speed, that's really not good. I'm going to do the honest thing here and... Uh, Pull this one back. Yeah, I was going to swing a load in towards the Simic player there. I'm actually going to pull some creatures back because that's really not fair. Um, let's just take some in, spread some damage around. Yeah, I could really barrel in some damage at each of our respective opponents here, but I'm not going to do it for the sheer honesty of it, which potentially shouldn't really do, but um, the Soul Warden triggering on the two, now only two tokens entering. Thanks to the Adeline, we only have two opponents. Getting closer and closer in towards a Voice of the Blessed here, though. I think we're actually going to see Voice of the Blessed becoming destructible. Yes, we are, because they gain a life here, triggering this twice. So, it yeah, doesn't have life gain. Oh, actually, they decided to put one over here, surprisingly. Okay, probably should have put one extra on here to make it indestructible, but... Oh, well. Yeah, scooping at instant speed like that really warps the shape of a game. I'm... Yeah, sorry to my opponents that that happened. Heliod Indestructible. Um, we do have Double Strike on the Jetmere. Oh, of course, I didn't actually account for that. Yeah, so we trample through the Heliod, but it will kill our Jetmere as well. So we'll be replaying that this turn, I think. Managing to get rid of both of the Vraskas there. Then our Jetmere dies to the Heliod, thanks to my bad attack. Get them down to 11... Um, commander damage on Jetmere and 7 life, that would have been them dead with the Adeline, I dare say. Alright, so our opponent down to 13, they're down to 7, we get our Jetmere out again here. Okay, and that did trigger the Soul Warden. I want to, I think I really want to blow this up before they gain a bunch more life. They can give this lifelink with the Heliod, so let's go Generous Gift onto that so it's less of a headache for us. Really don't want to use Generous Gift on something like that, but... I also want to be going really wide on them, so they trigger the Soul Warden thanks to the Elephant entering. That deanimates the Heliod as well because we took two white pips from them there. Argument to be made, I suppose, for not playing out the Jetmere there. Because someone might go for a board wipe and we could have dumped all our mana into Secure the Wastes. Then thrown out Jetmere next turn and swung in regardless. Um, yeah, so maybe should have held off on the Jetmere. I mean, maybe shouldn't have swung it into a bad attack in the first place. Oh, Terror of the Peaks, that's a pretty scary one. Um, yeah, thankfully, I don't think they're going to be able to trigger it this turn. Putting a plus counter on the Terror of the Peaks. 
smothering tithe done the world of good for us here because we have not been able to get into lands this game. Hardly any ramp whatsoever actually. I think smothering tithe's the only bit of ramp we've had. Jace minusing down there and creating two tokens that are copies of Jace Cunning Castaway, except they're not legendary. So two more of those and they will just keep doubling and doubling like crazy. And a delving barn, which allows them to proliferate with the inexorable tide. Gain two life draw a card from the delving barn. Just playing more and more into the smothering tithe. So I'm hoping that we can hold two mana up from the treasures as well as all the lands. If our opponent does wipe all the creatures, um, we can dump all but two of the treasure mana into the secure the wastes. And then, like I said previously, go for the jet mirror and still get rid of everyone. And as it stands now, that'll be eight treasures, which is seven secure the wastes. And we'll only have nine creatures once jet mirror comes out. Or eight creatures, which is one shy of nine. So we won't have the double strike. Luckily, I don't think we need it, because our opponent's life totals are pretty low. Jace going for the loot effect twice there. So, swinging in with the Atraxa, no doubt. And once again, swinging in at us. Uh, swinging in at us with the Shalai as well. Yeah, really low on flyers here, actually, which might be yeah, something to add to the deck. So, they get to fish a lot here. Giving us more treasure tokens for Secure the Wastes, though, which... Does mean that we can get into that double strike territory with the Jet Mirror if we need to. Discarding a couple of lands to the looting there. They've got two cards in hand. <laughs> Alright, an Obnixilis reignited. So that can get rid of a creature. They get to proliferate again. Already activated their Planeswalker abilities, thankfully. And they go for destroying the Adeline, which hasn't attacked in quite a while because well, I was trying to be fair with it. Not particularly worried about losing Adeline at this late stage, though. And for the proliferate with Atraxa, they uh, oh they do have the blue mana held up thanks to the chromatic lantern, so they could have a swan song or something. Only one card in hand, I wouldn't have thought so. So let's go for secure the waste and try and get the game one next turn. I'll just put six into X here. This is going to gain the Boros player six life, but I don't think it's going to be too consequential in all honesty. Uh, oh, it's not worthy that this has life link as well, so they should probably dump a lot of counters onto the Breon. The penultimate counter being removed from the Deep Forest Hermit. Okay, a wooded foothills. Um, I think... I mean, I'm pretty sure we've got our opponents here. We'll go for the War Pride here, just in case. And then Breath of Fury onto the Nakatal War Pride. Um, yeah, maybe should have taken the time to work out combat damage here, because again, we're dumping a bunch of life onto the Soul Warden and therefore to Breon. We could still see a sword or something like that from here, so that could still go on the jet mirror. Um, the squirrels and the jet mirror swinging in over this way, and then a bunch of warrior tokens, bunch of human tokens swinging in in this direction. Nakatl is going in over here as well. So that triggers the Nakatl War Pride. We'll get a creature copy into play per creature our opponent controls. So a couple in here for the Atraxa player. Those two coming into play trigger the... Uh, Soul Warden and the Heliod again, so Commander is now a 16-16 lifelink. Just blocking a bunch of tokens, they're going to lose next to all of their creatures apart from the Breon. And then Atraxa trying not to block, but it does actually have to block the Nakatl War Pride here, so they lose their Commander. It is saying at the bottom here that must block the War Pride, so yeah, they're obviously not seeing that. So Atraxa blocking the War Pride, doesn't particularly matter because we do win here. Alright, and take our opponent down to first strike damage. Um, Breath of Fury on the stack there, so we would have sacrificed Nakatl War Pride and dumped it on another Nakatl War Pride, then swung both of these in at any remaining um, players, and assuming that they can't kill it in combat, which this player could have with their big commander, um, but assuming they couldn't, then we go infinite there with the aura. Just decided to get that going to show the combo to all of you and also playing around the swords and a path on the jet mirror because we would have greatly reduced our power on the board if that had happened. Hopefully you all enjoyed this visit to jet mirror and Nuka Penna. Be sure to let me know if you want to see more from it and consider donating on Patreon as well. These videos take a long time to produce so a massive thank you to those of you who do support me in that way. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.